Um, there are a few rules we like to follow. Uh, number one being never go into the uh, woods after dark. Mm, that's a definite no-no. Definitely if you don't have backup or uh, a Lucia with you, aka uh, your weapon of choice, something to protect you from uh, any of the big bag boogie monsters that live out in the woods. Number two, uh, under any circumstance, any circumstance, don't ever, ever play with a Ouija board. Mm, 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 mm. That is a definite no-go, sir. Uh, leave that stuff alone. Uh, never played with one. Uh, gonna hit you with a little quick story before we get to number three. Uh, was dating a girl. Um, uh, there was a party. I got invited to a party. Went over to the party. She was at the party. They were having fun at the party. There were a lot of people at the party. Things were going to be good at this party. There was liqueur at this party, you know, that uh, feel-good juice. And uh, I get to said party, and everybody, you know, the lights are off. Everybody's in a room, you know, they come over the door, come downstairs, everybody's in the room. I come downstairs, the, the, they got candles and stuff lit, the lights are flickering. And in my mind, I'm like, uh, yes, sir. Well, we already know what's going on. It's about to go down. Um, I uh, throw my eyes left, and there are a bunch of people sitting around a Ouija board asking questions and playing games. Um, I immediately, no questions asked, no goodbye, talk to you later. Didn't even, didn't even recognize her. I immediately turned about face, walked up the stairs, and left. Yes. Do not play with Ouija boards. I don't expect. I don't want anyone to play with Ouija boards. That's number two. And number three, this is the biggest rule I have. Anywhere I go, I've been to Florida. I've had uh, the pleasure with the military to go to a bunch of different places and see the world. Um, anytime I go somewhere in the South, even. Uh, being here in Georgia, uh, anybody of water, in my mind, in my mind, it's full of gators, I don't care what nobody says, it's full of gators, period, uh, there's a training exercise out at Twilight Pond we were doing, and we go out there, and we're staying out there for a couple of days, and a couple of us are sleeping on top of the track, a couple of us are sleeping outside on the ground, and we hear this bellow, and it scares the bejesus out of my out of my platoon. And you know, we turned on lights trying to figure out what it is. We never saw anything, but there was a uh, what they call a range safety that came by, like the last day that we were there. And we told them we were like, hey, you know, we heard a weird freaking noise out here. And uh, he was like, oh yeah, this this pond has gators in. So. Uh, yeah, in my mind, everybody at water has gators in it. That leads me to uh, a little article I was reading. It's like the, the Haunted House article we were talking about, uh, I think it was a couple of videos ago. Um, I'm reading this article about these guys in Australia. I mean, if I ever go to Australia, I mean, I'm double checking my bath water. That's just me. I'm double checking the pool. I mean, it's the place is just like infested with crocodiles, and I just have no idea how these people just jump into the water all willy nilly, you know. And I don't know if it's getting comfortable. I don't know what it is, but uh, I mean, I just think anybody, any any liquid surrounding Australia, dangerous crocodiles. Period. Don't care what nobody say. I don't care if it's a fresh body of water. It's crocodiles in it. That's just my mindset, and I was and I was reading this article, and it was referring to uh, this young man, him and his buddies. His buddy had just got married, and they were throwing him a, a like a big crazy bachelor party. And during his and during his bachelor party, as always, that good go go juice, you know, that liquid courage that makes, especially us guys, man, it makes you do some stupid stuff. I mean. It comes in handy sometimes because it will help you talk to a lady if you if you need that motivation. And, you know, I always say, what what's the worst you can do if you go tell? 
talk to him. Hell you no, know, sir. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, he's, uh, they're at this, I guess, local, popular, uh, bar and grill. And before I even got down to the rest of it, I already knew what it was going to be about. Because I, well, I already knew what was going to happen, you know. Um, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. I mean, this the, the article started out with, you know, this bar and grill is nestled up on the riverbank that's just in infested with crocodiles. Their words, not mine. Infested with crocodiles. I mean, I don't even know if I can eat there. Uh, that's just me personally. I probably could eat there. That's being a little bit too much. But uh, have you seen the movie Blackwater? If you haven't seen the movie Blackwater before, we <laughs> check that out. It's based on a true story. Check it out. It's called Blackwater. Um, from what I can remember, from what I can remember, if you don't have... Netflix, it is on Netflix, streaming on Netflix, um, and for educational purposes, for educational purposes, uh, for you guys, uh, you can also check it out on www.dioz.com, you can also check it out there, you can also check that movie out there, so, there, hey, www.dioz.com, booze.com, anyway, uh, they said the guy had a few drinks, and he was like, hey, I'm feeling spry. You're getting married. This is a, this is a bachelor party. In a bachelor party, you do bachelor things. He decided to jump in the water and swim across to the other side of the riverbank. Um, we all know what ends up happening there. You know, we all know what ends up happening. He got eaten, pretty much. Uh, the bystanders stated and said that the guy was was uh was uh swimming and out of nowhere a 4.5 meter croc uh, surfaced and took him. And for my English brethren, my Americans, that's about 15 feet, 15 feet some change. So uh, um, as we already always know, I mean. I would never be in that situation to begin with. I'm never going to be in that situation to begin with. That's just me, personally. But if I do get taken by one, we all know my stance. Drink water. Get it over as quick as possible. Nobody wants to be ripped to shred, ship shreds, and nobody wants to uh, be cut in half. Mm, that ain't a good look for nobody. It's not going to work out well for anybody. And, uh, but that's just me. I'm not trying to make light of the matter. I'm just telling you how I really feel. Anytime I see these people, like I stated in my uh, shark dive video, the people that actually survive shark attacks or crocodile attacks, I mean, whatever you believe in, I believe in God. He must be cupping them in their hand or whatever your belief system is. Um, they got to be the luckiest people in the world because, like I said, when I got in that tank, though he, the guy said, yeah, the biggest one we got is 10 feet. To me, that son of a bitch looked like he was at least 15 feet. I'm not even going to lie to you. He looked at least 15 feet, you know. And that could have been just the fear of just being out of my element. I mean, it was my first time, you know, scuba diving. So, uh, but it's like I said, he's, uh, he got taken. And uh, they ended up finding his body. Uh, three days later, um, and uh, they killed three or four crocs trying to figure out who, you know, which one actually took him to try to get his remains back. And it's like I said, it, it, to me, it's really just sad that, um, you know, the young man's life was cut this short. But me personally, I'm just, guys, we gotta be, we gotta be smarter than things we do. You know, you gotta be smarter. I mean, any, anything that's infested with something, I mean, I'm not even going 10 feet. I wouldn't even be like 10 feet close to the bank. That's just me. Um, that it, It's really sad, but after reading that, it, it had a link with uh, other crop attacks, and it's like a, this is like a normal thing in a, in a, a good old Australia. So, uh, like I say, guys, be safe and what you do. Let's make smart decisions so we can be around here as long as we possibly can. Um, 
on a lighter note, has anyone seen that Farmers Only commercial? We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but Farmers Only has a commercial where farmers can meet and date each other. And it's you don't have to be lonely at FarmersOnly.com. So uh, if you're a farmer and you're watching this, hey man, check it out. Um, I thought it was funny. I didn't know they had time to, you know, see people. Because of farming. Milking cows. What's up? Hey. You were a no-show for post-game treatment. Looks like you rolled your ankle real bad back there, man. You should take a look and make sure it's nothing serious. I'm good, fam. Jeez, man, no, it's nothing. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Well, I'd feel a lot better if you could just finish this game. That was a nasty play. Hey, trust me, but okay? There's nothing to be concerned about. I'll be fine coming back. Sure, it's nothing. But I'm gonna keep a close eye on you, all right? If I notice even the slightest sign that something might be wrong, you're going in for a full exam. Yeah, whatever. Cool. Okay, then. I'll see you at practice. All right, man. All right, if you don't sub, at least, like, I'll holler. Shot to win the game. Where does this rank on the list of your biggest moments on the basketball court? Wow. Man, I still can't believe it. That's definitely one of the craziest and most intense moments I've had in my entire career, man. Any one of these guys could have hit the shot just as well, but tonight, it happened to be me. More than anything else, it was great to win the game, but to do it like that? Whew. Special, man. That was something I won't forget for a long, long time. <laughs> the NBA, where amazing happens, baby. <laughs> you feel me?